the Kiapa Rhino 50DS. Normally I get straight to the point, but please just indulge me for a minute. I have been waiting for this to come out for over a year now. I've had a browser window open with all the tabs of any place that said I could pre-order it. Uh, a German website, a Japanese website, a Spanish website, the Kiapo weapon, uh, website themselves. I mailed them. They told me to contact a local distributor, which I did, and they said they don't import toys. So I thought, you know, it's, it's never going to happen. But then last week, Friday evening, I was casually busy browsing a local store for some eye candy and... Et voila. Just out of nowhere, no fanfare, no nothing, just, hey, we're busy selling this now. So I, I bought it immediately, and I wasn't going to wait a year and then have it be sold out of my nose. So, okay, bought it, came back to check to make sure that I bought the right one, that it is uh, a pellet gun, not the, the 6mm BB, and, you know, okay, cool. Calm down, everything's great. Go through the rest of the page, read some of the stuff and everything. But then... Oh no, the Black Ops Langley Break Barrel Pistol, and it has a hateful trigger. Pulling it actually makes my hands start to shake. Keep pulling and pulling, and it seems like you've been pulling forever, and your fingers going tired. And you feel tired. your will leaving your body, and then all of a sudden it just goes off. The Kiapa Rhino 50DS is a CO2 powered revolver. Six shots available in either 4.5mm pellet or BB, or 6mm airsoft. The short version is... It's hefty and solid, rather loud, and as for the trigger, yeah, we'll get there. The slightly longer version is, it's made completely of metal, except for the handles, which means it's really sturdy and hefty in the hands. It feels really good, including the, the fake shells inside. It weighs just over 1.1 kilograms, and is just over 24 centimeters in length. The sights are fiber optic, and the front are fixed, the rear are adjustable for windage and elevation. The only rail you have is this Picatinny Weaver rail underneath for a lamp or a laser. There are no threads for a silencer and it's rather loud at 107 decibels. As for the recoil, it's an air gun so there isn't much in the first place, but the whole reason I love this gun in the first place is in the firearm world even, the barrel is unique in that it runs at the bottom here. So when you're holding it in your hand, any force goes into your hand pushing it back instead of being at the top acting like a lever and flipping up. So there's no uh, barrel flip whatsoever. As for the shot count, you'll be using a 12 gram CO2 cartridge. Uh, I'm getting about 35 shots before I'm noticing it starting to drop. So that's rather low. I'll get a different brand of CO2 cartridge and see if it likes that better. As for the safety, it's a manual affair behind the hammer. It locks both the hammer and the trigger in place. Which means we're on the trigger. So, revolvers can be single or double action. How it works is you can either use the trigger to rotate this and set some stuff, or you can halve the work by pulling this back first, which rotates and does everything, and then all you have to do is set it off with the trigger. So that's the theory. Let's see this in action. So, I'm going to use a single finger, I'm going to push it, you'll see this turn, some stuff will set in the inside, you'll see it become hot by a little red thing coming out the top, and then I'll fire. So push, rotate it in place, and fire. So in a smooth action, that's pretty easy. So you think, okay, I want to be more accurate, I'll spend the time doing some work beforehand by rotating and setting everything on the inside, which means this should be a really light trigger now. Again, a single figure. How? How have they inverted this equation? How is this twice as hard instead of half as hard? Let, let's, let's do that again. So... I don't understand. It's heavier. I don't get it. Anyway, it affects accuracy a little bit, which we'll see in the shooting segment now. So I shot from 6 meter at all the targets. Uh, the first few I was using the uh, JSB target pellets. So 
I tried double single action, resting my palm, um, my hand on the on the socks, and then the gun on my palm. Uh, no discernible difference between the accuracy between double and single action there. So I decided to try resting the underside of the barrel on the socks to just try tame it. Uh, single action again was all over the place, and the double action was actually pretty accurate. So I thought, okay, well. Let me try another single action to dispel it completely, to just show just how terrible it is in single action. But I got this really tight group and then just one flyer. So, of course, like any good engineer, I decided to change all the factors. Um, I tried switching over to the Mysokuglin pellets and got that group. And I consistently get a tighter group with these pellets, um, but I do find that double action is really more accurate than single action. So it's unfortunate, but it's just how it is. Um, the nice thing about this is is the whole cylinder. I mean, everything about it. You pull this down and then you push from the other side and it lifts the cylinder and you can use this extractor to push the, the, the shells out. So, make a noise. Um, one of the nicest things is the sound of putting those in. I'll hold it up the camera just so it sounds I mean, it's really satisfying. It's unfortunate about the trigger, but hey, so be it. Uh, I won't be using this as a target practice gun, I'll just be using this for fun. Speaking of which, I hope you're having all the fun in the world. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.